Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 2nd November 2019. There is a small announcement for the viewers. As requested by many viewers, we are resuming our Sunday Hindu News Analysis. So from tomorrow onwards, on every Sunday, there will be Hindu News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy. Now for today's analysis, these are the list of articles chosen for today's analysis. It has been given along with the page numbers of Chennai, Bengaluru, Delhi, Tiruvannathapuram, and Hyderabad editions. The link for the handwritten notes and the timestamping for the displayed articles is given in the description box below. And for the benefit of smartphone users, it is also given in the comment section. Let's move on to our first news article analysis. This discussion is based on the pollution levels in Delhi and NCR, that is National Capital Region. The syllabus that can be linked to this discussion is given here for your reference. The news article states that the pollution levels in Delhi and NCR has become severe. As a result of this, schools in the capital have been ordered to be closed till November 5th. The schools were closed mainly because a public health emergency has been declared in the capital. It was declared by the Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority, that is EPCA. The pollution is so severe and the air condition in Delhi is so bad that the newspaper calls Delhi and NCR as a gas chamber. See, gas chamber is nothing but an airtight room that can be filled with poisonous gas so as to kill people or to kill animals. These gas chambers were infamously used by the Nazis in their concentration camps during the Second World War to kill and torture people. So by gas chamber, the newspaper means that the air has become poisonous in Delhi that it can also kill people. So you can just imagine how bad the pollution is in capital. Now what caused this severe air pollution? One of the well-known reasons is stubble burning. There is a rising level of smoke in Delhi due to burning of crop stubble. This was told by the CPCB. According to CPCB, the stubble burning contribution to pollution has gone up to 45 percentage. Now this has resulted in the high particulate matter concentration in air. So CPCB has advised people to minimize their outdoor activities now. This has been told by CPCB because people are facing symptoms that are associated with pollution such as irritation in the eyes, irritation in throat, dry skin, skin allergies, chronic cough and breathlessness etc. So it was recommended that individuals who have asthma, then elderly people and kids are to stay at home so as they will not be affected by the air pollution. Now another reason is given by Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority that is EPCA. According to EPCA, the combination of uh, accumulated toxins because of the local pollution in Delhi and NCR is the reason for severe air pollution. This local pollution was spiked or it was sharply increased because of cracker burning on the festive occasion of Diwali. Now this has combined with the stubble burning and extremely adverse weather which has resulted in severe air pollution. Now here how the extremely adverse weather is a reason. It is because now it is winter in Delhi and there is a temperature inversion during winter. Now due to this temperature inversion the warm air rests above the cooler air. Hence, the smog is trapped closer to the ground and it makes the air more polluted and it also decreases the visibility. Now, we know that smog is a combination of various gases with the water vapor and dust. A large part of the gases that form smog is produced when fuels are burnt. Smog causes a misty haze that is similar to fog but smog is very different in composition than fog. In fact, the word smog has been coined from the combination of words. They are fog plus smoke which equals smog. Now in simple terms, we can say that smog refers to the hazy air that causes difficult breathing conditions. So according to EPCA, the severe air pollution is due to the local pollution in Delhi and NCR. In addition to this, EPCA has also told that the air quality in Delhi and NCR has deteriorated and it is now at the severe plus level. Due to this severe plus level only, EPCA has asked the government to take this situation as a public health emergency as we saw in the beginning because it will have adverse health impacts on all 
and it will particularly have adverse impact on the children. So, as a measure to tackle this, the Delhi Chief Minister distributed masks to school children so that they can safeguard themselves from air pollution. We know that the distribution of masks is a part of the Delhi government's initiative called as Parali Pollution or Parali Pradushan Action Plan. In this, as we have discussed many times, Parali in Punjabi means straw or stubble or the crop residue and Pradushan in Hindi means pollution. This action plan is a seven point action plan. First point in this plan is odd even scheme for vehicles. Second is procuring of uh, N95 category masks on a big scale. Delhiites will be given masks free of cost by the government of Delhi. Now in this, this uh, N95 category mask is a disposable mask which acts as a respirator. Respirator means a mask that is worn on face, it covers nose and mouth, then it forms a tight seal against the skin. And more importantly, a respirator filters out certain airborne particles. So like this, the N95 mask is a respirator which is a safety device that covers the nose and mouth and it helps to protect the wearer or the person who wears it from breathing in some hazardous substances. The N95 mask protects you from breathing in small particles in the air such as dust and mold. It is designed to filter out at least 95 percentage of the dust and mold in the air. But it is said that N95 masks do not protect the person against chemical vapors, chemical gases, carbon monoxide, gasoline, asbestos, lead or low oxygen environment. Then the third one is banning of bursting crackers during Diwali celebrations which is based on a Supreme Court order. So instead of bursting crackers, laser show was organized by the Delhi government as planned in this seven point action plan. Then the fourth point is tackling dust particles in air. So water will be sprinkled on a big scale to contain dust and then in addition mechanized sweeping will also be carried out. Then the fifth point is identifying 12 hot spots in Delhi. Then after identification of these hot spots, special plans will be drafted and they will be implemented for these places. Then the sixth point is placing of two environment marshals in each ward so that they can prevent burning of waste by guards and they will also prevent other actions that lead to air pollution. Next the seventh and the last point is Delhi tree challenge. In this, the Delhi public will be involved for afforestation in Delhi. They will be asked to grow plants. Then there will be free home delivery of saplings to people who want to grow plants near their house. Now this is to increase the green cover in the city. So this was with respect to the seven point action plan or the Parali Pollution Action Plan of Delhi government. Now we saw in the beginning that the air quality in Delhi and NCR is at severe plus level. So what is this severe plus level? To understand this, first you should recall the National Air Quality Index. Air Quality Index is a tool for effective communication of air quality status to people. This communication should be in terms which are easy to understand and which are not based on technical terms. So AQI or Air Quality Index transforms complex air quality data of various pollutants into a single number, single nomenclature and a single color. Now based on these, there are six air quality index categories. They are good, satisfactory, moderately polluted, poor, very poor and then severe. As you can see in this table, the air quality index range for these categories is also given here. Now keep this in mind. Now before discussing about uh, severe plus, let us uh, discuss also about graded response action plan. This graded response action plan was uh, notified by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It was notified through EPAC, that is the Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority. This notification was issued in January 2017. As per this notification, when the air quality reaches moderate category, poor category, very poor category or severe category, as per these national air quality index, then certain actions have to be taken by government agencies. This graded response action plan or in short GRAP specifies actions that are required for controlling particulate matter emissions from various pollution sources and it also helps to prevent PM10 or PM2.5 levels from going beyond the moderate national air quality index category. 
under this GRAP, the actions and the responsible agencies are notified. So, in short, we can say that graded response action plan means the measures that are put forward by the government agencies based on the AQI category. It includes a set of guidelines that are to be followed when air quality deteriorates. Now, we saw that only four categories are having graded response action plan. But uh, after this, a new category has also been added by the government that is the severe plus or emergency category. This category is when the PM 2.5 levels cross the 300 micrograms per meter cubes or when the PM 10 levels cross 500 micrograms per meter cube levels. Now, you should note that these levels are five times about the standard levels of air quality. And when these levels persist for 48 hours or more, it is termed as severe plus or emergency category. Now, do not confuse these levels with air quality index because the concentration range for pollutants PM 2.5 and PM 10 in severe category of AQI is 250 plus and 430 plus. Now, when this increases to 300 and 500 respectively, then it is categorized as severe plus or emergency category. Now, what are the actions that needed to be taken when the air pollution is in severe category? First, the entry of truck traffic into Delhi has to be stopped and only those trucks which are carrying the essential commodities will be allowed to enter Delhi. Then, construction activities in Delhi has to be stopped the next is the odd and even scheme for private vehicles has to be introduced under the action plan. We know that this odd and even scheme is based on license plate numbers. And moreover, when the air quality is in severe plus or in emergency category, the vehicles that are exempted under this scheme should be minimized, which means many types of vehicles have to be included under the purview of this scheme. Then the task force which is working to control air pollution should take decision on any additional steps such as shutting of schools etc. So, that is why schools have been ordered to be closed by the Delhi government which is the news today. With this we come to the end of this news article discussion. Moving on to the next news article discussion. If you see this news article is also based on air pollution in Delhi and especially the air pollution which is caused by stubble burning. The syllabus that is relevant to this discussion is also given here for your reference. In the last article discussion, we saw that according to CPCB, that is the Central Pollution Control Board, the stubble burning contribution to pollution has gone up to 45 percentage and this has resulted in the high particulate matter concentration in air. But contrary to this fact, the Union Ministry of uh, Environment, Forests and Climate Change has informed the Supreme Court that the incidence of stubble burning in the three neighboring states of Delhi and the national capital region has come down by 41 percentage since 2016. Now, here you should note that this is the contribution of stubble burning to pollution and this is the level of stubble burning in the neighboring states. So, both values are totally different. The central government has claimed that stubble burning has seen a reduction in 2018 when compared to 2017. In Punjab, there is a reduction of 11 percentage. In Haryana, there is a reduction of 29.5 percentage. And in Uttar Pradesh, there is a reduction of 24.5 percentage. Then the ministry also added that special central schemes have been rolled out to control air pollution in Delhi and national capital region. These schemes are to tackle air pollution and for in situ or local management of crop residue and also for promotion of agriculture mechanization. Under this, the machines to manage crop residue will be disbursed among the individual farmers for 50 percent subsidy and then an 80 percentage discount will be given for setting up of custom hiring centers for these crop residue management machines. Now, in this custom hiring centers or in short CHCs are basically a unit. It comprises of a set of farm machinery, implements and equipment which is meant for custom hiring by farmers. These centers are set up to bring farm machinery to be available within the reach of small land holding farmers or the marginal land holding farmers who usually do not know about these machinery. So, this is a method used by the government to educate the farmers and also to reduce the stubble burning or the crop residue burning. 
that is all about this news article the split practice question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the next news article discussion this news article is related to afspa the syllabus that is relevant to the analysis of this news article is given here for your reference see afspa is the acronym of armed forces special powers act now there are two afspas that is there are two acts which are in operation in this one afspa is exclusively for jammu and kashmir now this act is known as armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act of 1990 then the other act is applicable to some of the northeastern states of india and it is known as the armed forces special powers act of 1958 now our today's discussion is with respect to armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act of 1990 so let's focus on that now to understand that you should first know some facts about the reorganization of jammu and kashmir we know that from october 31st the state of jammu and kashmir has been ceased to exist or it no longer exists now as per the jammu and kashmir reorganization act of 2019 the state of jammu and kashmir has been split into union territory of jammu and kashmir and union territory of ladakh now in this we know that union territory of jammu and kashmir is with the state legislature and the union territory of ladakh is without state legislature now when the jammu and kashmir was a state before the present bifurcation the union home ministry or the governor of the erstwhile state of jammu and kashmir was the designated authority for notifying the armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act of 1990 now here the term notifying means the power of the governor of jammu and kashmir or the central government to issue notification in the official gazette by this they can declare the whole state of jammu and kashmir or any part of the state to be a disturbed area now this is as per section 3 of the armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act of 1990 so as per section 3 of this act if either the governor of jammu and kashmir or the central government is of the opinion that the whole part of the state of jammu and kashmir or any particular part of the state of jammu and kashmir is in a disturbed or in a dangerous condition then they can issue notification to declare those areas as disturbed areas and after this armed forces can be used for maintenance of public order in those particular areas or in the whole state itself Now in this Ministry of Home Affairs of Government of India is the designated authority on behalf of the central government for this purpose that is for notifying the act now regarding this a notification has been released by the cabinet secretary yesterday that is on 1st November 2019 in this notification the cabinet secretariat has reasserted or confirmed that the Ministry of Home Affairs is the designated authority of the central government so the ministry of home affairs would decide on the imposition of the armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act of 1990 in the union territories of jammu and kashmir and in ladakh but if you see in newspaper it is just given as armed forces special powers act so don't get confused with the other act of afspa which is afspa 1958 now know that this armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act of 1990 has been in force in jammu and kashmir since july 1990 this act empowers the armed forces to conduct operations anywhere in order to maintain public order and then to arrest anyone without a warrant and also then to enter and search any premises without warrant and then it also empowers the armed forces to stop search and seize any vehicles that are carrying any suspicious person who is a proclaimed offender then in addition to this as per the notification the department of jammu and kashmir which functions under the ministry of home affairs has been renamed it has been renamed as the department of jammu kashmir and ladakh affairs according to the official sources the department of jammu kashmir and ladakh affairs deals with the union territories of jammu and kashmir and ladakh and then it also deals with the administration of the armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act of 1990 this department deals with all the matters that are relating to the union territories of jammu and kashmir and union territory of ladakh which falls under the purview of the union government that is the central government 
Now, in this, there are some exceptions also. All the matters which have been specifically assigned to any other ministry or any other department of government of India is not dealt by this department. So, what are the matters that will be dealt by this department? These matters include counter-terrorism with Jammu and Kashmir and then coordination in respect of subjects or matters that is specifically allotted to any other ministry or department. For example, you can take the Ministry of Defense. This department will coordinate with Ministry of Defense for manning and managing the line of control between India and Pakistan, etc. But also remember that the subjects or the matters with which the Ministry of External Affairs is concerned is excluded under this. Now, the news article also states that based on the notification released by the Cabinet Secretariat, the Department of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh Affairs would be responsible for all matters that are enumerated in the state list and concurrent list. But if uh, any matter is specifically assigned to any other ministry or department of government of India, then they are excluded under the purview of this department. Now, with respect to this discussion, you should note one point that it is not still clear that whether the Lieutenant Governor of the newly created Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Union Territory of Ladakh will have the power to declare disturbed areas like the governor of the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir or not. So, we shall wait and see whether there is an update from the Ministry of Home Affairs with respect to this matter. With this, we come to the end of this news article discussion. The displayed practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next news article discussion. This news article talks about the case against the controversial anti-dumping practices or methodologies of USA. The syllabus that can be linked to this discussion is given here for your reference. Now, to understand the news article, let us first discuss about dumping, anti-dumping duty and what is the controversy with this anti-dumping practices. See, dumping in general is a situation of international price discrimination. In this, the price of a product when sold in the importing country is less than the price of that product in the market of the exporting country. Thus, in the simplest of cases, one has to identify dumping only by simply comparing the prices in two markets. Now, let us take one example to understand this. A product X is imported by India from a company of country A. If the price of the product X sold by company A in India is rupees 100 and the price of that same product in its own country that is in the country A itself is rupees 110. So, here you can see that in India that product is sold in lesser amount but in its own country it is much higher. So, now this amounts to dumping. Now, with respect to dumping, let us see the role of WTO that is World Trade Organization. We know that WTO is the only global international organization that is dealing with the rules of trade between nations. And also remember that WTO is not a United Nations body. It is headquartered at Geneva in Switzerland. The WTO allows governments to act against dumping. Now, this is allowed when there is genuine material injury to the competing domestic industry. Now, in order to do that, the government has to be able to show that dumping is taking place and the government has to calculate the extent of dumping that is how much lower the export price is compared to the exporters home market price and the government has to show that the dumping is causing injury or it is threatening to do injury to the domestic market. So, many governments take action against dumping in order to defend their domestic industries and this is done by imposing anti-dumping duty. Therefore, anti-dumping duty is imposed to neutralize the impact of cheap imports in the imported country. Now, with this background in mind, let us discuss the present case. The present case is between US and China. The case is against US because it has imposed anti-dumping duty on Chinese imports. China has alleged that US is practicing the arbitrary anti-dumping practices and China is also alleging that United States is violating WTO rules and it was continuing a practice known as zeroing. So, what is this zeroing? Let us take the example of US and let us understand what is zeroing. See, an investigating authority of a country usually calculates the dumping margin by getting the average of the differences between the export prices and the home market prices of that product 
which is in question. When the investigating authority chooses to disregard or it chooses to put a value of zero on instances, when the export price is higher than the home market price, then this practice is called as zeroing. Now, the criticism with this practice is that experts say this practice artificially inflates or increases the dumping margins. So, in turn, dumping duties will also increase. So, the country which is exporting to that particular country will have to pay more dumping duty. Now, with respect to USA, if you see in a typical anti-dumping investigation, US department calculates average net prices for each product that is sold in the United States. It then compares each of those US prices to the product's normal value. Here, normal value is nothing but the home market value of the exporting country and the zeroing is introduced after the comparison of the US price of the product and the normal value of the product. Now, when the normal value is higher than the US price, then this difference is treated as the dumping amount for that sale or that comparison because this is also one another method used for calculating anti-dumping duty. Now, whenever the US price is higher, the dumping amount is set to zero by the US authorities rather than calculating negative value. After this, all dumping amounts are added and they are divided by the aggregate export sales amount to get the company's overall dumping margin. Now, in this, zeroing eliminates the negative dumping margins from the dumping calculation. Now, while doing so, it can create dumping margins. Now, you might be confused with these technical terms. So, let us take one example to understand this. Let us uh, assume that there are two products. One is product 1 and another is product 2. Now, the home market value for this product 1 is $49.50 and in US it is $50. Then for product 2, the home market value or the normal value is $50 and in US it is $49.50. Now, in this product 1, if you calculate the difference, it will be $0.50 and for product 2, it will be $0.50. But in this, the difference is that here the US market price is more. So, the difference that will be calculated will be in negative. Here it will be positive. So, when the arithmetic sum of the individual dumping margins is calculated, it will be 0 because the price differences for both products will cancel each other out. But here the surprise is that this is not how it happens in USA. Originally, they have to calculate like this only, but they will not calculate like this. In this, the negative dumping is not calculated. Rather, this value is set as 0. So, that means when this value is 0 and this value is 0 0.50 dollars, then the total dumping margin for that company will be 0 0.50 dollars. So, by this, that company will be at the disadvantage. Because now based on this value, the company has to pay the anti-dumping duty, even though somewhere it is giving products at lesser prices. So, from this we can say that US is deliberately comparing its higher domestic prices with the prices of Chinese exports in its market for calculating the anti-dumping duty and for imposing anti-dumping duty. So, that is why China is blaming USA that it is uh, carrying out arbitrary anti-dumping practices. Now, based on this only, the World Trade Organization panel has uh, stated that China is entitled to slap a compensatory sanction on US imports and this can be worth of $3.579 billion and that too annually. So, every year China can impose sanctions on US imports. Now, this decision has to be seen as a result of US's failure to remove anti-dumping duties. And you should also note that this is the first time WTO has authorized China to impose tariffs in a trade dispute. So, in this news discussion, we discussed about the important terms like dumping, anti-dumping duty and the controversies with respect to the anti-dumping methodologies of USA and the decision of WTO. With this, we come to the end of this news article discussion. The respite practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next news article discussion, which is based on the unemployment data that was released by an independent think tank on Indian economy. The syllabus that can be linked to this discussion is given here for your reference. The news article states that an unemployment data has been released by an independent think tank on Indian economy. This independent think tank is 
Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. So, before discussing about the news article, let us first understand what do we mean by unemployment rate. See, basically the unemployment rate simply reflects the proportion of the labor force that does not have a job but is available and is actively looking for work. The unemployment rate is calculated by expressing the number of unemployed persons as a percentage of the total number of persons in the labor force. By labor force, we mean that the sum of uh, number of persons who are employed and the number of persons who are unemployed. So, now let us discuss the news article. The article states that as per the data released by this think tank, the unemployment rate for October 2019 was 8.5 percentage. Now, you should note that this is for only one month, not for a whole year. Now, this rate is at the highest level since August 2016 and additionally the rate of uh, urban unemployment is higher than the rural unemployment. It is because the urban unemployment is at 8.9 percentage and the rural unemployment is at 8.3 percentage. So, on a whole we can say that both rural and urban population suffer almost equally from unemployment. Now, let us discuss the state wise data. The highest levels of unemployment were seen in the state of uh, Tripura and in the state of Haryana. In Tripura, it was 27.2 percentage and in Haryana, it was 23.4 percentage. Now, from this we can say that almost one in every four person in the labor force is unemployed in these states. Then, which are the states and union territories where the unemployment rate was the lowest? It was in the state of Tamil Nadu and Uttarakhand and in the union territory Puducherry. In Tamil Nadu it was 1.1 percentage, in Uttarakhand it was 1.5 percentage and in Puducherry it was 1.2 percentage. Now, we can say that these values are much better than the national rate of unemployment for the month of October which is at 8.5 percentage. Now, the news article also mentions that the findings of the think tank is in line with the findings of latest periodic labor force survey for the year 2017 to 18. Now, remember that this survey was released by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Now, this survey noted two biggest issues. They were the shrinking share of labor force and the rising levels of unemployment. Now, according to this survey, the unemployment rate between July 2017 and June 2018 was 6.1 percentage. Now, we have discussed this uh, PLFS survey in detail on our 5th June 2019 Hindu News Analysis. Please have a look at it. Then the article also mentions about the decline in growth rate of core sectors. Now, the article is mentioning about the core sectors in the index of industrial production that is IAP. The output for the 8 core sectors for the month of uh, September 2019 has contracted or reduced by 5.2 percentage. Now, this is considered as the worst performance in the core sectors in the last 14 years. So, what we need to understand here is that the Indian economy is facing the severe risk of rising unemployment rate and the decline in industrial growth. Next, the article also compares the findings of a research center with the findings of this think tank. This research center, which is the Center for Sustainable Employment, focuses in the areas of job creation, employment and sustainable livelihoods. According to this research center and its findings, the employment in India has declined by an unprecedented 90 lakh jobs between the years 2011 to 12 and 2017 to 18. So, by this we can clearly see that the unemployment rate and loss of jobs has been increasing in India over the last few years. Then according to the data, the Indian economy is passing through an important phase of structural transformation. It means the share and number of workers in the agricultural sector has been declining and this is in correspondence with the rise in employment in the non-farm sectors. However, only the services sector is driving the growth of jobs in the non-farm sectors. 
Now, this is because the employment growth in construction has uh, decelerated or declined, which is along with the fall in the employment in the manufacturing sector during uh, the periods 2011 to 12 and 2017 to 18. Then the article also states that as per the study, the agricultural employment has declined by 11.5 percentage during 2011 to 12 and 2017 to 18. And in the same period, employment in the services sector has increased by 13.4 percentage, while the manufacturing employment or the employment in the manufacturing sector has decreased by 5.7 percentage. Then the study also talks about the number of working age people not in labor force, education and training, which is in short is known as NLET. It means the number of unemployed persons who are not pursuing education or who are not undergoing training, but they are a part of labor force. That is, they are willing to work. Now, the number of working age people in NLET has increased from 2011 to 12. It was about 84 million or 8.4 crores in 2011 to 12 and now it has crossed 100 million that is 10 crore. So, we can say that the reduction in total employment in agriculture and the reduction of uh, youth employment in agriculture is good news from the structural transformation point of view because it gradually takes the labor force in the agriculture and it shifts them to the manufacturing and industry sector. But here the problem is falling of uh, employment in manufacturing sector and the decline in the employment in the construction sector are bad news for the economy because if this continues then we will have to solely depend on the services sector for job creation. It is because the secondary sector which comprises of manufacturing and industries has more potential to employ more people. So, if there is a decline of employment in these sectors, then it is a bad news for the economy because more people will be unemployed and they will all be dependent on the only sector that is left, that is the services sector. So, as a conclusion, we can say that to sustain the growth of income and to improve the standard of living and to reduce poverty, there should be more employment opportunities in the manufacturing and construction sector because it will help to sustain the structural transformation process that is the gradual shift from the agriculture sector to industrial sector and then to the services sector and it will also help to sustain the growth of GDP over the long run. So, with this we come to the end of this news article discussion. The display practice question will be discussed in the last session. Now, we have come to the last session for the day which is the practice questions discussion session. This question is based on graded response action plan two statements are given and we have to choose the correct statement. The first statement is it specifies action plans that are required for controlling particulate matter emissions from various pollution sources. Yes, this is correct and the second half states to prevent PM10 and PM2.5 levels to go beyond the severe national air quality index category. Now, this is wrong because this graded response action plan specifies the action plans to prevent PM10 and PM2.5 levels to go beyond the moderate category, not the severe category. So, this statement is wrong. The second statement is it has been notified by the Central Pollution Control Board. Now, this is also wrong. The GRAP plan has been notified by the Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority and specifically by the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change and this plan was issued in January 2017. Under this plan, when the air quality reaches moderate category, poor category, very poor category, severe category or severe plus category, then certain actions have to be taken by the government agencies and these actions are listed in this graded response action plan. So, in this question, both the statements are wrong and the question asks for the correct statement. So, the correct answer to this question is option D, neither 1 nor 2. This next question is based on uh, Armed Forces Jammu and Kashmir Special Powers Act of 1990. The first statement is this act can be imposed on the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir only. Now, previously when there was a state of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, at that time it can be imposed on the state of Jammu and Kashmir only. But now, the state has been bifurcated into two union territories that is union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and union territory of Ladakh. So, now this act 
can be imposed on both these union territories and not only on the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. And under this act, any part of these union territories or the union territory itself can be declared as the disturbed area by the central government. If that particular area is in any disturbed condition or in any dangerous condition. So, this statement is wrong. Now, this second statement states the Department of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh Affairs under the Prime Minister's office deals with the administration of this act. Now, yes, this department deals with the administrations of this act, but whether this department works under the Prime Minister's office? No, this department works under Ministry of Home Affairs. So, this statement is also wrong. In this question, both the statements are wrong. And the question also asks for the not correct statement, that is the incorrect statements. So, the correct answer to this question is both 1 and 2, as both the statements are incorrect. Now, this next question is based on anti-dumping duty. Four descriptions about anti-dumping duty is given and we have to choose the correct answer. Now, to answer this question correctly, you should actually know the definition of anti-dumping duty. It is a duty that will be imposed when there is a transaction between two countries. And in that transaction, one country should be the importing country and the other country should be the exporting country. And this anti-dumping duty is imposed to safeguard the domestic manufacturers of the importing country and to safeguard them against the cheap imports. So, from this we can say that this duty is imposed on imported goods. So, if the importing country has to safeguard, then the importing nation has to impose this anti-dumping duty. So, there should be imported goods in answer and importing nation in the answer, which is present in option B. It is a duty imposed on imported goods by the importing nation. So, this statement is correct. Now, this question is based on periodic labor force survey. The first statement states, the unemployment rate in India during 2017 to 18 as per this survey is 6.1 percentage. Yes, this is correct. This is a fact. Remember this. The second statement states the periodic labor force survey 2017-18 was released by the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Now, because the survey name has labor in it, do not think that this survey has been released by Ministry of Labor and Employment. This survey has been released by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So, in this statement, one is the only correct statement. So, the final correct answer to this question is option A, one only. With this, we come to the end of today's Hindu News Analysis. If you like the video, don't forget to like, comment and share and do subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel for more updates related to civil service examination preparation. We will meet you tomorrow.